Just gotta make sure my uh, stream alerts are turned off. Or else if someone follows in the middle of the stream, it'll scare the shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't have that problem because no one follows me. So. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, it doesn't happen often. Curse. That's why it scares me. No, I'm glad you're the one streaming because if it was my internet, it would be like a the little slideshow for everyone. Ah, oh, shit. It's like uh, living on res. It's like 200 down at least. Oh, really? And I'm like, I'm like rolling in the money, and then I move back here, and it's like two megabytes per second down, and I'm like, ooh, and it's yeah. like half that up, and I'm like, ooh, this isn't gonna work. Yeah, that's so rough. That happened the same thing with me when I went off to college and like came back afterwards. It was just like, the internet at all the colleges is so nice. Like it's like top tier it's, yeah exactly it's like unless your parents are like you know um it, it like hip with, with uh, the <laughs> stuff. that's a good word for it like they're, they're probably not gonna have the greatest internet package especially like it's hard to get this internet if you don't like live right in the middle of the, yeah it's like, like for me i think i think like bell is going around my neighborhood saying they're selling five now which is like pretty dope like five is super fast mm -hmm. but then like people have been signing up and like their download and upload barely barely changes and they're like what's going on here they're like oh no no no! it's five to like the main transformer and then it's normal and then they're like everyone's like what's going on <laughs> that's really shitty <laughs> i'm actually yeah. on um, bell fiber right now uh and not like it's pretty good but i guess uh, not every area has it uh, all installed yet yeah Another nice thing about um, like wagon and Nitro's like, replays is that they're current. All the I was gonna cast some of the ones that are on the eight, but then I looked at them and they were all um, like old replays because whatever, oh, yeah. whatever tiny patch happened that they decided they needed to make it so we couldn't watch the replays anymore. Yeah, like, these ones are actually that's such a weird thing. Why do they do that? I know it's so annoying. It's just for like the tiniest change, and then they're like, oh, they should oh. disable like the the playback and not the actual replay with friends yeah because they don't want you playing an old version of starcraft because it just ruins like the game yeah like it, it actually just like i think it would, it'll crash or some weird crap will happen on blizzard's end mm -hmm. but yeah i wonder what the reason is between uh i mean for uh not being able to watch old versions with people yeah because it's like you're able to do it like by yourself so you'd think they'd have some way of uh yeah well, I'm, together. I'm just curious if it's like a bug that's been there forever and they're like, man, it's fine. Yeah. No one wants to old, watch old replays anyways. Yeah. I guess it's like such a minute problem. Like, I, I can't but, imagine there's like that many But for people. like casters, like imagine like a major event happens and then a patch happens right after. Yeah. And you're like, no, I wanted to cast those on my, on my stream or for my YouTube channel or whatever. Yeah. And now it's like infinitely harder. Yeah. Uh, I guess we'll just get right into this one. I don't know sure when, when everyone's going to turn up, but I'm sure they'll turn up eventually. This could be very interesting, because this could theoretically be the last time we've ever seen Wagon play StarCraft 2. It, it could be, and you know, I'm so fortunate enough to be involved with this, uh, this series. Yeah. I'm gonna go see the the legend play. You know, if you beat, uh, who did you lose to, uh, wagon or Necro? I, I beat. Uh, I I lost the wagon. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You could have potentially stopped that. This could have been. You. If I had, I delayed my round of eight match, and he quit Starcraft before we played. Yeah, you could have been here. <laughs> I could have been here. You could have potentially lost to Necro. I don't know That's who right. wins this. I one. definitely would have lost to Necro. Necro is Anyways, like so good right now. Where's your camera right now? Okay, I'm hovering above the Zerg base. Okay, so in the bottom right, we have our purple Zerg, all ends the wagon. Potentially the last time we see him play. And up in the top left, we have in the teal, it is Micro. Okay. Uh, now you'll have to be our, our guide here in the PVZ because I I'm so I'm so glad it's PVZ because I feel like if I was hit with like a ZBT or a ZBZ, I'd just be like. Oh, uh, there's, there's units. Things are happening. Yes. So this is different from Wagon's series against me. Wagon 12 pulled me every single match. Oh, 
That's, um, uh, that is not very this, nice. <laughs> this is actually a, a very uh, risky build now of the 16 hash here. Okay. Uh, because the cannon rushes are so common. Okay, so right. most Zergs are tending to go pool first. Because yeah, exactly. And then he went he went hatch gas pool, which is like the most greedy. So Wagon must know that Nitro doesn't like to, to cannon rush. Yeah, I can't say I've ever like heard of Nitro cannon rushing. Like that just doesn't seem like his style. He's just normally and, like bitching about people cheesing. And right? on the flip side, Nitro is doing probably the most standard opening in, in PvZ right now. Uh, just the one gate into Cyber after your Nexus. And then he's got three and gas back at home. So nothing too crazy. I'm, I'm, uh, it's, it's a fun day to be playing Starcraft 2 PvZ because, like, pretty much anything works right now. Like, the meta is, like, the single Stargate into a, an Archon drop or a, a double Stargate. But, like, there's so many other builds that are somewhat viable right now. Like, you, you see, like, the charge let all ends, you know, you got a depth pressure. Um, and then there's still this old style of DT drops or some kind of other cheese. Um, but it looks like Nitro is just playing this right by the books. Uh, yeah, I feel like all of Protoss matches right now are kind of like anything goes. It's like mm -hmm. PVT. It's like okay, you have no fucking clue what proxy your opponent's gonna do versus you. So yeah, like, it's like the I've game gotten like hundred. I've gotten 120 MMR over the past few days just by scouting like around my base with my probe before I send it off. <laughs> and like I'll find like a half-built barracks and I'll be like, ooh. It's like oh, I'll just uh, stop this. Thank you. So again, not much to talk about on Wagon's side. He's just getting a third base and link speed, so this is probably the most standard you can play this. And then the Stalker indicates something, and there's the Twilight Council. So um, I, I think the only thing this could be is, is DT. I don't want this to be famous last words here, but generally if you invest in the Stalker, uh, you really don't want your opponent scouting that, that uh, whatever that tech is, mainly it's the Twilight. Uh, so the Stalker is just to kill that first Overlord? Yep, yeah, and then he might patrol around his main to, to see a lot of times Zerg will send out their second one as well. So, yeah, this definitely does look like the start of a DT drop build. Unless he, like, is a build where you go DT drops that different from the one where you go... No, for... this is identical um, to a DT, and there's there's a Dark Shrine, so it, it looks like Nitro's going to be doing my my ladder build. All right. Uh, Wagon is sending out some links, though, and, you know, with nothing out in the front, it might be a decent indicator of what's going on. Uh, he does need to see the gases in the natural when it goes down. Because if he sees no gas right here, and he does see no gas... Oh, Wagon actually gets in with the Ling. This is huge. Yeah, he'll see absolutely everything up here. Oh, this is all Wagon needs. Yeah, and it looks like... I think Ra Wagon kind of sniffed the dead earlier, because he did put down that Roach Warren, which obviously... Um, yeah, like, yeah, the I, Roach Warren almost finished, actually. Yeah, you, you really don't want the Roach Warren, I feel like, in a long Z, uh, ZVP, but you really do need it if you want to deal with any of these, uh, like, Archon drop builds. So, uh, I think what Nyker's going to do is just make these into Archons right away, because you see Spores are already going down, um, one at each base, and then also with the Roach Warren now, it's going to be hard to do anything with these DTs here. Yeah, and you definitely don't want to lose any of those, um, or else, like... Protoss has put all of their eggs into this one basket to fly across the map, and then if you lose that egg... Pr pr I'm this surprised so this much. is how Necro plays PvZ, because the Stargate mana is so strong right now. Yeah, I'm um, not sure. Do you think, um, is this build a bit better defensively than other builds? Yeah, it, I, I might be thinking, um, Wagon likes his Ling stuff, and he likes to cancel your third base a lot. Mm -hmm. So if you open Stargate, you're kind of asking to, to have to cancel your third base quite a bit. Um, but that's not the direction Wagon's taking this game at all. He's going Roaches, uh, he kills off those Adepts. Those, those few drone kills were nice, and they also distracted Wagon. He doesn't really know where the or Prism is right now. Um, but look at this, third base of Wagon, three Queens, Creed Spread's going, and there's a Spore at every base. I'm not sure how much Nitro can do. Yeah, um, it's actually a very odd seeing Wagon use Roaches. That's not a unit you normally see him use, as you said. Like, he really likes his, um, link base play. But these Archons are going to come in here. Uh, gonna, I don't know how many units they killed. What, like one queen there? Maybe yeah, an overlord? No, just an overlord. Uh, um, let's, this let's is such it. a huge investment for Nitro, by the way. Like going, He lost both of his adepts. Uh, and then also, you know, behind this, he's just getting a mortal charge um, and three more gates. So it's not even like he's getting like a, a plus one upgrade or anything like that. Yeah. Um, and and, really and to, get, to get one overlord with that Archon drop, like think about how much he invested into that. Yeah. Wagon doing a really good job looking for the third base too. 
So what's uh, what's no, the follow up here from Neko there. then? He's um, getting charge. What is he going? The lack for of a this? third base indicates I think he might just be going for an all in here. There's there's just kind of two directions you can take a, a DT drop that doesn't do too much. Um, and one of them is just throwing down a bunch of gates and doing some kind of charge let arc on immortal all in, and that seems to be the direction Necro is heading now. Yeah. Um, still no third base, and these are a lot of units now. Wagon's still building a bit of drones, and that's a little concerning. Yeah, he does have Roach Speed on the way, and a decent amount of Roaches on the Production tab with some Ravagers, so that can definitely be good versus this, but we'll have to see how the actual engage goes. Um, not a whole lot of units here. Oh, some decent vials! Yeah. Popping both Immortal Shields and also getting a Sentry. Oh, another Sentry going down. Yeah, but still, there might just sure. not be enough units here. This is a pretty strong army from Micro. Yeah, but... th that was amazing vials from Wagon. 15 Roaches on the way. Um, if Wagon can wow. just buy some time, I, th I think he can definitely hold this. Um, Nikos really okay. has to play this well. These units are all very he's, very strong, but they're all very fragile as well. Bouncing back behind the natural, misses some Biles, that might cost them. The drones are involved in the fight. It looks like Wagon is held here, but at what cost? Yeah, he's managed to finally pick away at a lot of these Archons, and those are all so expensive. Uh, Nikro really doesn't want to be losing any of these, especially if no Hold on, there's, there's still enough Zealots left in... in it looks like Nikro's actually trapped Wagon in a corner here. This is so good. You want to be kiting with those roaches. Yeah. Oh dear. Not, so no there goes the roaches. For a wagon to run. A lot more roaches on the production tab though, but with this reinforcement wave of uh, Archons, I'm not sure if it's going to be enough. And GG is And there gone. it is right there. It was looking very uh, promising for Wagon once he killed all of those Archons, but you know, he, he, he trapped himself with his building placement. Yeah, it's really unfortunate. He just he didn't have that room to backpedal and... Uh, kite like he needed. Excellent hit, watch solo. So a quick game one, um, easy win for Nitro, making it seem like it at least. Um, and in my practice matches with Grip, he was telling me how uh, how aggressive Nitro is. Um, so you can be expecting to see his games throughout the entire series. He, Nitro doesn't like to take it late, and he likes to uh, end with some kind of timing. That was probably the most uh, obvious thing you can do after an Archon drop. Uh, is just go for that huge all-in. I'm surprised it worked though because uh, there was no damage from that initial two Archons. Yeah, I guess it's one of those things like as you said Wagon was starting to drone up a bit afterwards. Um, if maybe Wagon wasn't droning up after that, like we could have seen a lot more roaches out. He could have been a bit more prepared to deal with that uh, that push, but... Oh, oh, I definitely agree. I think um, we're going to get to see how good Wagon is at adjusting during series, because, uh, I mean, anyone who who at least has a good understanding of Zerg would just uh, say, okay, maybe I over a little. I got to respect the fact that Nitro plays so aggressive. Okay, just one sec here. Wagon's a very smart player. I, I expect to see a closer game, too. Yeah, and I feel like we all know Wagon as this like this really good crafter of builds. Like he's made so many horrible, disgusting builds that have ruined people's days. I, I'm yeah, really for hoping those, we for, see something like that. For those that don't know, Wagon actually was the 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 brainchild behind, uh, or I guess the two base ultra play at PVT was Wagon's brainchild. Uh, he had whipped that up well before everyone else started using it. It kind of trickled its way to, uh, I think even even some pros started doing it as as a one off cheese build. Yeah, I mean it's definitely one of those builds that's just like it's really strong the first time you see it. Um, and I guess speaking of uh, wagon, we have him spawning down here in the bottom right in the pink. And then in the top left, we have once again that blue colored. Protoss, Nicro. Not too much to talk about. Identical openers once again. Wait, is this the right replay? I feel like, did they not play an acid plant before? <laughs> We're just watching the same game twice? They might, unless they played in the same game twice. Oh, that's not good. One sec. I'm gonna leave. I'm pretty sure okay. I made on the wrong replay. I'm an idiot. Hold on, I'm gonna I'm gonna zoom. Let's see. Yeah, this is definitely the same. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. They had uh, the no. or sorry the organization of it was like in the replay file was messed up for me. Anyways, it went like game one, game three. Oh, okay. Uh, 
Oh, we don't have to watch that one. I feel like I had a good idea where it was going anyways. <laughs> okay. There you go. I'm really good at uh I'm really good at this. If yeah, hopefully you're as good as uh you're as good in video editing as you are in casting and that way you can just snip out that yeah that false start. <laughs> I'll just like right after the introductions I'll just like cap it out so it's like back to the other game. <laughs> <laughs> Just see if anyone notices yeah. that we like, change the entire map. Okay, so this should be the right one, hopefully. You can tell I'm a player and not a caster because my mouse sensitivity is so high. Yeah. And I have team colors on, so everyone's just the, the green and red. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, I, I always have to lower mine because, like, when, you, when you're when trying to, like, observe a game and you're on such high mouse sensitivity, it just looks, like, horrible. To anyone watching, to... anyone who's watching, but to you, there's no alarm bells ringing. Yeah, like, oh, I'm just playing another game of StarCraft. Or they yeah. do. I remember one time I was streaming, like I'm the guy's like I'm literally getting dizzy watching. <laughs> <laughs> like oh no. All right, so we have a spawning up here in the top left in the pink. It is wagon. And in the bottom right, it is our favorite Protoss, the blue Nitro. You think that's blue? I is would, it blue? I would classify that as teal, but... Really? Yeah. So, wagon's purple. Wagon's pink. What, oh, like... why is everything darker in my world? Do you this have team weird. colors on really, uh, really low? Perhaps perhaps I do. Okay, so it looks like wagon... Or, er, micro, sorry, I actually blocked wagon's hatchery from going down the natural. That's pretty interesting. This is a fairly big deal. Especially because Wagon wasn't intending on on cheesing either, so this is just a massive delay. Yeah, that's a big yikes when you're uh, the third player. We Nikers, also saw that nothing Nikers is pretty active with his adepts too, so that could play in as well. That's such a long distance between the, the main and the second base now. Yeah, I, I'm never sure when I play on this map, like, how the hell people are supposed to expand. <laughs> like, there's just, like, so many options. To be honest, this is such a good map for Protoss, but I veto it. I'm like, I, this is too confusing for me. <laughs> yeah, it's so big. It's like, I have like three potential thirds, but none of them are really that good. So I'm like, ah. Oh. And I'm pretty sure there's some pretty good PVT tank spots here, especially like by your natural and stuff. I, I don't mess with that. Yeah. This is one of my this is one of my few vetoes this season. Yeah, I haven't vetoed too actually, just because it's it's just too confusing. I like to keep my StarCraft games as simple as possible. So I'd love to see a bit of variation in this game from both players because it's, it's seeming like the same thing. Wagon starting speed again. This is identical to what he did last game. It's, it's odd he's bringing the two drones though. Yeah, where is he? What's he doing? I wonder if I wonder if that was a misclick because he pulled that. Oh no, you intentionally pulled from gas. This is this is intentional for Wagon. Oh. Okay. Oh, and he's got more coming. Something to uh, to watch here is the Adept is now halfway across the map. And the Queen is going to be out on time. But there's only but only two lanes in the way right now. Once so. again, look at these other two lanes coming to join. It's actually They're actually going to get picked off by this Adept here. Yeah, that's pretty big. You definitely, as a Zerg player, you don't want to make any extra lanes if you don't have to. Like, and like... Yeah, now Wagon's queuing up four lanes and also... Uh, he has to run into oh one drone going. This is pretty good because Nitro also got a good, decent scout here. He sees the third base. He knows nothing's weird. He knows nothing weird is happening. And that stalker once again doing its job, killing the overlord before it scouts the the tech here. I'm surprised Wagon or uh, Nitro is doing the same thing again. Losing the adept though, that's pretty big. You definitely want to keep this alive because when it comes time to take your third base, the more of the adepts, the better. Uh, especially with your Archon build, your first four warp ins are your DTs, right? So yeah. uh, you can't really replace those adepts when they die until after your first draw. I'm loving the scouting from Wagon. And I'm also loving the safety sentry in case anything did happen. Uh, this is something that I personally skip and then will lose the odd game to. Yeah, it's um, definitely one of those tools. It's like if you make it, I feel like you put yourself a tiny bit behind. But, you know, sometimes it's worth that investment. Well, it depends your transition, too. Like, 
the transition we saw from Nitro last game with that charge lit all in, that's not gas heavy at all, so uh, it yeah. makes sense. But if you're doing something weird, like going into a, a Stargate or like a High Templar tech after that, then yeah, you could be in a little bit of trouble. I know Robotics Bay Colossus is getting a little more popular nowadays. Once again, Nitro's pushing out those two depths, cleaning out a lane. Um, Wagon actually doesn't really have vision of the other potential third base, so he's not going to know if it's an all-in like he did last game. Yeah, and that can definitely come back to bite him. It's looking like an identical build from Nitro as well. It's been a very uneventful series so far. <laughs> yeah, even getting the charge again, so there probably will be a charge follow-up uh, again. With this. No, I don't remember. I, I don't think last game uh, Wagon got that plus one attack so early. Yeah, no, I think it was like halfway done when the attack started so so that's a really good adjustment because that's gonna be done for this all in yeah and, and the rush horns finishing now layers going down this is looking a little bit better for wagon here he built a lot of links though this is something he didn't do the last game and he's gonna send them across the map yeah you'll, you'll notice the drone counts a lot lower this game from wagon i think he he did learn his lesson from last game he's got to respect that follow-up all in What's weird is that he's only seeing the DTs now. Oh, he's going to go for the snipe on the score caller. Yeah, and he doesn't have any units in position here. Oh, um, this is horrible. Ouch. Yeah, uh, he's going to lose. This is a good This is a good change in pace from Nitro as well, because he, he morphed the main Archons last game. So keeping them as DTs actually does a lot to uh, to your opponent's uh, head. You know, you think you're going to be facing two Archons, and then you end up facing four DT. It's quite a good change. And I wasn't able to catch what those links did, if anything, but I mean, there's not really much of a. I, I, I a think way they in. just checked a third to see if there was a third, and they saw there wasn't. So, yeah. That so. is actually a pretty important scout. He needs to see that if he's yeah. going to hold this follow up attack. And I believe it's around 6 minutes 30 seconds is kind of like the time where you would normally see a Protoss put down their third. So. Oh, for sure. Yeah, especially in this meta, we're seeing third base is probably faster than ever before. So it uh, looks like he's going to go across the map again. This time he's bringing his roaches with him as well. Um, going to turn he's, those roaches home now. Yeah, he sees those archons and he's a little worried. I would be too after last game. A little bit of indecision here from Wagon, but he's just going to bring the roaches home and keep the wings out on the map. Yeah, and this is such a long map that like any indecision like, like that really a, cost you. That was a massive supply block or at least down period from Nitro. He was floating around 1,500 minerals and not nothing on the production tab. Yeah, he still has 1k in the bank, so... He has yeah, I think, I think Nitro might have slipped a little bit while microing. And look at this, he leaves his Archons at home as well. We're at in halfway through the map. This could be a little dangerous. He notices now, though. And Wagon just straight roaches into the production tab. He knows it's the same build from last yeah, game. Yeah, this is how you gotta do it. And you see Wagon's posturing for a defense here. Nitro still does have an alarming, alarming amount of stuff, though. The supplies are even, and that's not really a good sign at this point in the game. Yeah, especially on that Road Ravager. It's really not the most supply-efficient uh, army company game. So, 0-0. Zero, zero. Oh, this is looking way better so far for Wagon. 0-0 zero, zero versus his plus one roaches. Yeah, and now these roaches are just going to be able to target down a lot of these Archons, getting rid of a lot of the... I love how the uh, queens are here. here, too. Oh, my God. This is very one-sided. Yeah, this is going a lot better for Wagon. I think he'll definitely be able to hold this time. Uh, really the issue is the Immortals, the there's no damage on the Immortals. Yeah, one of the shields going down, but um, unit counts are getting very low for both sides, and that tends to go in favor Ten of the tree goes third. down. Nitro actually did a really good job keeping the Roaches away from his Immortals. If the Immortals get picked off, it's pretty, the push is pretty much over. Yeah, these Immortals have an insane amount of kills on them. So Wagon, massing Lings at this point because there's no Archons, I love that decision. Yeah, and these lanes are going to come out and they're going to start surrounding these Immortals. Warpism coming in back to pick them up and it looks like these Immortals will survive, but that's the end of this push and there's no third great, base in sight Yeah, for great Nitro. pick up, but at the end of the day, there's no third and we're seeing just one Immortal and a handful of DTs on the production tab. I don't like this warping at all, actually. Uh, if only Wagon saw it. He yeah, will now, though. Yeah. Big fight here. Uh, a lot of Archons being warped in. This is a pretty bad spot for the B and this army not completely fighting together here. Uh, good pickups on the warp puts. Reinforcements. Good Biles. It looks like Wagon has successfully held. Yeah, and that's that's a lot of units gone. And I feel like Necro's only chance after that botched uh, first all-in is just to all-in again. 
But yeah, exactly. You just he, saw him. No transition. He's just massing up units here. And like he I lost like all of his expensive units. Like, what can he do he, after this? He can't keep pushing, but he's harassing here with his units. As long as he doesn't lose any, I like this. It's keeping the Zerg back. Wagon's actually droning, not aware that Nitro has no transition whatsoever. Oh, yeah, he actually just lost the uh, more or the Archon in that prism. It's pretty huge. I Wagon hasn't scouted um, the lack of a third. He probably thinks he's pushing into a three base Protoss right now. Yeah. Um, but in reality, all Nitro's doing is building units. It might be better just to, as soon as he sees this, he should probably back off, and that's exactly what he does. Yeah, he really doesn't need to fight this, but unfortunately, with that War Prism, he can just keep juggling those Immortals forward, so Wagon's oh, exactly. gonna need a those, lot of damage. Those charge lots are, are actually falling pretty well. Wagon, uh, Wagon finally escapes here. Um, and you'll notice on the production tab, no more drones, just all units again. Wagon has correctly identified what's going on. This is actually a scarier round two than I thought it would be. Wagon still has a healthy supply lead. I love these lings, but he's not going to find anything. There's no third base. You need those back at home. Yeah, I guess this is, um, he's hoping to catch Wagon, or sorry, Necro trying to put down a third base. I guess he doesn't really, I don't know, maybe, oh, maybe he feels Wagen, more uncomfortable playing versus Necro. Like, Necro is definitely Wagen like knows now the lings are on the way home. Oh, finally his own roaches. Yeah, yikes. A lot of damage going on to these zealots, so they can't really. Oh, engage. once again. Oh wow, this is a very awkward position for Wagon. He's gonna get those links back around. And plus two is about to finish, so Wagon's actually um, been pretty smart this holding back until he knows that he's gonna have a. These supply a blocks have actually been really hurting him though. Nitro, good force fields. Yeah, really nice concave on all these torches. So these force fields are really not doing what they needed to That's do here. That swung heavily in Nitro's favor. All of a sudden, this is looking a lot better for our Protoss. We seem to be out of it five minutes ago. Yeah, um, 13 Hydras are on the way, though, so once those hatch, I think this might... But if he loses all the Roaches, there's no buffer for that. Yeah. Oh my god, Bylang, his own Overseers. Yeah, I think he should have pulled the drones for this, maybe. Um, like, as long as you kill these units... Oh, he I battled himself gonna... again! That's like five Biles in the same game! Yeah, oh my god, these uh, oh, Hydras dear. are all getting separated. They do have plus two though, so they're doing a lot of damage, and finally it looks like all the zealots oh, are getting cleaned up here. I love the reinforcements from behind. Oh, if only he could have got that. He does, he gets the immortal. All of a yeah, sudden, so Wagon's that... looking like he's back in it. I think Wagon will hold on here. Um, it is going to be pretty sloppy, but I think he just has enough. He has some pretty good uh, upgrades on these units, and plus two hide just push out a lot of damage, so... All of a sudden, Nitro has a worker lead, though. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, unfortunately, he's. Uh, I think it's not even going to matter that much because he's oversaturated in like all of his mineral patches. So. And just like that, Wagon feeling a little safer, hops right back up, so they're on par. But again, Wagon's four bases versus Nitro's two. This yeah. is pretty abysmal here. Also, the longer this goes on, the more that zero zero is going to hurt Nitro. Yeah, I'm just, I'm not sure we can ever see any transition from him other than continually is he, all in. Nitro is, is pulling his probes for this next attack. This is, is better than all in as you get. Yeah, honestly, you know what? I think it's a good move because he's oversaturated back at home. So with, like, he's gonna... You don't normally see this with Protoss though because there's so much useful back at home. You can keep warping in during your attack. But... Yeah. I mean, he's trying to make something happen and I appreciate that. <laughs> I mean, against Mass Hydra, maybe if the probes eat enough shots, then yeah. it, it might actually not be a bad idea. But this, there's, a, there's still a lot of roaches and ravengers here. And there's not a whole lot of Hydralis here, actually. So there's not a huge unit count, actually, from the Zerg. He has a high supply, but like as far as units go, there's not a whole lot. So I, I think Nitro actually still has a weird chance in this game. Uh, I wish Nitro had some chargelets, though, because right now he can't really do a hard engage. Yeah. All these units are just so squishy. Uh, these probes are gonna have to do well. a lot more work. And uh, really nice concave here from Wagon. All these expensive units from Nitro are starting to go down, and GG is gonna be called. Wagon's gonna GG. take game number two. We're back one one. I really like to see the little adjustments Wagon did between game one and game two. Yeah. He's, he's always been a really smart player, and I, and I love seeing those mid-game adjustments. Sorry, one second. 
What I'm more interested to see though is is Nyker's next move. You know, he's he's tried the same thing twice in a row. Time two didn't work out. What else does he have in his bag of tricks? Yeah, and, and like Nyker is definitely a good enough player that he's not just going to rely off of one build this whole series. Or if he does, that would be, and somehow makes it work, that would be that'd be pretty awesome. But <laughs> I, I feel like he's going to bring up something else. He has he has it more could, to show. It could be one of those things where where Wagon says there's no way he does it three games in a row. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, it's a scoutable attack, right? So the, you can't really just rely off of luck as yeah. an agro. Like, Wagon can see what you're doing. I would really love to see a change of tempo into, like, say, that double Phoenix opener. Yeah, I've, been, I've seen a lot of those games, and I find those are really interesting. Well, wh what's happening now is Nitro, like, he started plus one air before he even got his Roach Warren, and then he invested so heavily into Roaches that if you do the same thing against a Stargate opener, you have nothing. You have absolutely nothing. Alright, so we'll see what these players decide to bust out in this game. Uh, I feel like unless Wang does any early like uh, pool builds in, uh, in this series, he's probably going to be more of the defense defensive player. I feel like it's going to be Nitro setting the pace most Which of the is, time. Which is almost weird to say because you're so used to seeing Wagon being that hyperactive Ling based Zerg in PvZ. Um, but for whatever reason, he's giving Nitro a bit more space early game. And uh, speaking of our players, we have our player of the Wagon spawning in the bottom right in the pink. And in, in the teal... <laughs> Learning from my mistakes. It is our one and only Nitro. Those probes look so weird to me. I, I, um, those are the new skin ones, right? They're just they're just a little off of the normal one. Enough for you to be like, what is that? Yeah. A little sleeker. A they, little more shaded. Every time I look at them, I think they're made of like clay or something. Like they just don't look right. So Nitro. Doing the same thing he did last game, where he's just going to block this hatchery. It's so annoying. Oh, can Wagon sneak by? He does. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's so frustrating. Because the pretty much the only reason you send the probe that early is to block that hatchery. Yeah, and that's that's how all the mining you lose doing that. Like, well, especially like the earlier the game is, the more of those five minerals every trip matters, right? So, mm -hmm. I would have. Yeah, that's a little risky. Uh, you, you you have to scout though. You have to see if you're getting pooled if there's no hatchery there, but. The timing just didn't work out with Fracture. I love this, though. Blocking the third base location. I'm pretty sure that won't be taken for a little while there, Nitro. Yeah, but you know what? He, he took the drive over there. He's just gonna... Yeah, to face. go home right away is a little <laughs> bit of a... You're, you're admitting your defeat, right? Yeah. And that's not Nitro's style. He just wants to make sure that there's no three hash before pool business. And there's not... Uh, Wagon going into, shockingly, gas pool. And it's looking like... I don't want to speak too soon, but I might guess that there's Lin speed coming up after this and a third base. You have to respect how small Fracture is, though. Games can play out very differently on this map. Yeah, the so, resistance on this map is definitely a, a lot smaller than most. I wouldn't be surprised if Niker goes for that really fast charge build. Um, I'm not sure if he has it in his arsenal, but that's pretty deadly on this map. He is going for that Stalker again, though. I don't... Do we have any... No, so he's going for the Stalker first. The last two games, he went for Adept first. Yeah, Stalker first might be a tell he's trying something super cheesy here. Um, ideally, the sooner the Stalker, the, the sooner you can get rid of that Overlord. Yeah, I don't think he's going to be able to get it, though, because it is going to go into the back there. Yeah, I, it's, I don't it's think he can... little cozy home. Yeah, there's no way he does enough damage to that Overlord. And after that investment in a Stalker... Uh, I don't know oh, if he can hide there, though. Oh, I, I didn't realize What a weird spot. Fire Stalkers can shoot. Oh, but he's oh, I love this from Wagon, just delaying this. Yeah, he's just gonna keep that stalker moving around on its feet. What an odd adjustment. Maybe because he saw the Overlord already, he just started the stalker. But that's such a weird decision to go stalker and then adapt. Yeah, I feel like you really want that adapt out early. Um, like it's just uh, one of those things where if you get link flooded, like you really want that adapt. Like you don't care about the stalker. Now this is such a huge scout for Night for Wagon if he sees Nitro's Twilight, but I don't think he will. He does see the double gas in the main, though. Um, that's not too much of a tell, but at least you know you're not getting some getting some like warp gate rushed in, into a four gate or something weird like that. Not that you expect that from Nitro. 
Yeah, and same build again. I mean, this is like, this was and is probably one of the most standard PvZ builds. This so was like, meta for a very, very, very long time. So yeah. I feel like we often see the the High Templar variant used a lot more uh, currently. But I mean, there's I don't think there's anything wrong with the Dark Templar one. Yeah, especially with, um, you know, those Ling uh, Ling Hydra is really good against uh, any kind of immortal stuff. So oh. and uh, nice surround actually on those adapts actually kills one. But oh, the safer. lower HP adapt taking the front. Wang is not gonna bite it though. Yeah. Uh, he really should have benched that adept. So these these games are all playing out like the exact same every time with slight variations. I'm trying really hard to make this an entertaining cast, guys. I, I swear to God. <laughs> and so we've seen the identical builds. Yeah, I blame Micro. This is his fault. Although it kind of seemed like Nitro was interested in the third base there with the shade. He wants to see how many lings are camping by his third base. Now that could just be because he wants to know if there's a bunch of Banes morphing yeah. ready to kill him. Well, I feel like uh, he, that commit did... to the charge is kind of like indicative of all of it. Yeah, exactly. And he did skip the sentry too. So maybe it was smart that he shaded out just in case he did see those Banes. Um, and a bunch of gates going down now. So it's, it's pretty obvious. Whoopty dingle do. Nitro is looking like he's going to be doing the same thing. This is not going to work this game. Nitro needs to scout. Oh, that's a really fast reaction. That could have gone very south. Yeah, and he even gets the queen out of it. Low. Wow, that's that's great. Uh, normally, if you're going for that third base and there's a bunch of units there, you end up losing a lot of those DTs, and then you're not going to have a fun time after that. Uh, wow, so identical builds. No plus one? That's kind of weird. I, I think upgrades make this push out so much stronger. Uh, but maybe Necro's onto something that I'm not. I, I still like how Necro's popping out with these units and killing off the scouts, so Wagon never really actually knows if he's getting all in or not. Yeah, and that's definitely like versus a third player. The biggest thing you can do versus them in this matchup is deny information. Because information is what decides when they build drones and stuff. So, like, to get rid of that, I feel like just puts them in the, the, such a weird situation. It looks like Nitro is going to try to take a third base, though. That's yeah, he's getting he's getting a second Robo. That's very odd. Um, and he's also getting a Forge. So it looks like he's he wants to go a little longer than normal. Now, this could just be a reaction because he sees so many Roaches. Because he did invest in all those extra gateways. So I feel like his intention was to all in again. But after seeing, like, whoa, my opponent has skipped a lot of drones, he's taking his third base. This is cool because uh, Nitro is actually playing Reactionary as opposed to Reserve here. Yeah, and I guess like when you've seen this twice in a row as Wagon, you're kind of thinking like, I, this is how I deal with this, I need to go with this. Yeah, Wag Wagon is just an autopilot now, seeing um, you know, the DT drop and then the lack of a third base for so long, he's he knows exactly what's coming and then for Nitro to throw in this curveball. Yeah, uh, this one does scout that thing. Yeah, yeah that's, that's very important. It's going to be interesting to see. I would love to see some kind of tech twist go down immediately for Wagon. Yeah, Wagon does have a lot of army supply. Do you think maybe he could make something happen here? or? Uh, it looks like he's going to try. Um, two sentries actually isn't too much here. Oh, wow. This is a lot of units for Zerg. He does have a lot of immortals, though. Um, and two more pumping it at a time. The, the and... double rub is going to be painful. There's one waiting back at the natural. He needs to get that in this fight, right. too. Oh, that was uh, almost a head for Wagon. If he took one more step, those force fields are going to cut him in half. But again, with only two sentries, that's one of three force fields available. Mm -hmm. This is still looking pretty uh, dicey uh, for Wagon. This is scary now, so. now with three extra immortals joining this fight. And now it looks like Nycro is going to be the aggressor here. Moving across the map, these armies are going to catch each other in the middle of the map here, it looks like. Um, I'd love to see some, some Biles trying to stall out this attack, and that's exactly what Wagon's interested in. Nightcore not trying to dodge him at all, I'm so surprised by that. We do have more Hydro's than Finnis, but uh, no Hydro's on the way just yet. Oh, great force field, and the morphing Ravengers are actually going to prevent Wagon from bringing the rest of his army down, so he gets to cancel on the 4th. Okay, It'd be so cool if we saw a bio on this observer here. I feel like it's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, but probably not There's right now. There's the dodges. <laughs> I, I feel like Wagon got a little too ambitious here. 
He's yeah. on Crete, but there's so much Protoss. Yeah, I feel like he just kind of needs to sit back. It's like, yeah, Nitro is macro are they, in this are time. the answer to this, and they're on the way. Good Biles, though. Yeah, he's losing a lot, though. These Immortals are doing so much work. Uh, he needs some more beef. All these are dead now, but there, there's nothing else here for Wagon. Yeah, these Titans are on the way. Hydras. If there's nothing in front of them... Oh, no. Wagon seems to have coughed up a hairball in this game. Yeah, he's just like, you know... He's making the hot dogs and throwing away his buns. Like, he just doesn't have... Oh, I love that <laughs> analogy. That's very really accurate. <laughs> He just doesn't have anything to put them in. Oh, he's pulling the drones, though. This <laughs> doesn't work if your opponent has a third base. That's, this, this would have been good game two, right? Game the one drones game. are when you just pull out some pieces of bread and use those. He does buy time, drones. though. I'm loving this. The link's being added in. There's no more Archons. Yeah, and a lot of Immortals are actually getting picked off there, so... He's oh, good bios. Um, Zoning away those Immortals, too. If he buys enough time, I don't think he lost. Like, look at that third base health. He did a good job keeping that. Oh, jeez. Fighting at the last moment. He did lose a lot of his queens, though. Uh, he's only he, down to two right now. Yeah, so, that, that that math doesn't really add up. You got three bases, but only two queens. Could be doing a little better. All right. Um, this is Notice, pretty ambitious from Wagon, actually, to head across the map, I think. Nitro doesn't have gases on his third, and where you're going to see that is in his upgrades. Notice he hasn't started anything other than the plus one that he finished. And going into Templar Archives, you'd expect to see those gases. I think maybe he just got distracted with his... Here they are here. But ideally, if you're going up to Templar Archives, that's an expensive upgrade. You gotta get Storm, and then you gotta morph in a bunch of gas-heavy High Templars, so... Yeah, and everything Protoss has just eats up so much gas, so, like, you really need those extra gases. If Storm you're starting. Going later. I would love to see Wagon get a little aggressive here again. He's got the Hydra numbers, and the truth is there's no response ready just yet for Nitro. Yeah, Necro is going to start chrono boosting out that storm, but he doesn't really have the energy on any high Templars yet. He doesn't have the army count really to deal with these Hydras. I love his thought process though. He made just one initially back at home, and now he's now he's made three more. So as soon as storm finishes, he's going to have one storm available. That should just scare away wagon until the other three have enough energy. All right. Okay, here's the big push though. I don't know about this without without storm. Yeah. I feel like Wagon could just dive on this and actually be pretty successful. Oh, look at this harass at the third base by Wagon, though. There's and nothing here. What are you going to do? Fight the Roaches with their high Templar? This is great. And he's winning the fight back near his base, too. This is looking a lot better for yeah, him. Yeah, drop in the main as well. Um, that's actually going to pick off a lot of stuff. But there is units popping out here to deal with this. Oh, the Roaches need to turn around, and they do. I love how he's only investing a few more units into defending this. Yeah, but he lost a lot of probes uh, from that her attack at the third base. So overall, I'd say Wagon definitely uh, it is in the clear here. Like, Yeah, Wagon still has an 8 worker lead. Oh, okay. but the, six, the 6 high Templar are starting to scare me now because there's not really anything else on the horizon here for Wagon. Uh, he's just building mass Hydra, and, and that doesn't fare too well against all these serfs. I like the pre-split, though. Here we go. Half of his army taking this engage up front. I'm not sure about that, but then two more crawling oh, in wow. from behind. He's on the high ground now, so... Um... Good storms, though, from Nitro. He might just have to... Wagon might just have to back off here for a little. He's got a 40 supply lead. He's burnt some of that energy now. Yeah, but There's most only of one that supply is in a drone, so like his army supply is kind of even. I think he just needs to back out, uh, back off here and just get up to lurkers. That is exactly what he's doing. You notice Nitro has a zealot right at the fifth base. He knows that uh, one wagon's going to try to uh, take it, and wagon's so smart, just blindly sending a roach there. All right. So this is a pretty scary push from Nitro. Uh, wagon has a forty supply lead. But Storm is going to massacre these damaged Hydras and Roaches. Yeah, a lot Whiffing of Storms have gone, da uh, gone down. And he doesn't really have a, a, an excess of Storms here. So he's really going to have to make has, him count. It looks like two or three more good splits from Wagon. But the more that he pulls his army away, the more damage his whatever units are left up front takes. Oh, wow. All of a sudden, the supply is equaling out. And there's still a little bit of energy left. On the sentries, none left on the high tempo. That's a pretty big deal if you're going mass hydra. Yeah, and a lot of these oh, walls wow. are actually getting taken out right away. But these zealots will come up, and zealots versus hydras are only good when the zealots are right on top of them. But that's where they are. The uh, the immortals blocked the zealots there for a little bit, but it looks oh, I love the reinforcement lings. I might have spoke too soon. Hydras are popping out too. 
Oh, I don't know though. This Archon's training very well against Hydras because they're in low numbers. Um, it looks like... Oh, it's so tough to call at this point. Nykra still has a really good core army with his Immortals. But if you're only attacking with a few Hydras at a time, they're not going to trade out too well. Yeah, um, Wagon really, I think, just needs to get a couple lurkers out here um, and just hold his ground. That's so painful losing that base too because Nykra is mining from 3 and now you've reset back to 3 for Wagon. Oh, I'm not sure about this trade either. I understand trying to stall for more Hydras, but High Templar are now coming down again. I think Nycro might have done enough to stall. Oh, Wagon oh. actually GGing out. Oh, that was. Uh, I feel like he probably could have stayed in, in for a bit longer. Yeah, not even attempting to rebuild the fourth. That, that's something you'd expect to see go down immediately. And that brings us to 2 1 for Nycro? Yeah. In our best of best five. Of five. Yeah, I feel like that might have just been a little bit of frustration for Wagon rather than anything. Yeah, I guess too, like, I find when you're facing versus High Templars when you're Zerg, like, um, just the amount of damage you feel like you take is often greater than what is actually done. So well, you what feel we like saw there behind. was Wagon held the push. He lost his fourth base, but he held the push. And in the process, Necro had lost every single High Templar he made. Um, and he had just warped in two more without energy. So I feel like Wagon still had maybe 30 seconds or a minute of, of uh, play there before those High Templar had storms again. Yeah, and like, as long as you can keep repeating that in some way, like, Necro's economy wasn't great. He wasn't going to be able to, you know, secure any higher tech than those High Templars. Like, I think he was kind of stuck where he was, but I guess Wagon probably didn't see it the same way we did, so... Yeah, he's probably played in that situation quite a bit before. So now we're going to blue shift. Alright, so spawning down here in the bottom left in the pink, it is Wagon. And in the top right are Teal Protoss, Nycro. This is a very straightforward map. It's large enough where a lot of those rush strats that work in Fracture aren't that effective. Um, but it's still, the, the path to your, your opponent's base is still linear enough that you end up seeing a lot of those standard styles. Um, and not just an excessive amount of, say, air or anything like that. So, a good good all-around map. I don't think either either race minds play on this one. Nycro really seems to like to send this probe out very early. Yeah, this time he does make sure he's there in time for the probe. And I love this from Wagon, just deciding immediately to take the third base. There's no hesitation. I feel like he's almost expecting it at this point. Uh, so it doesn't waste any time. Now, Necker was pretty quick pulling away there, so I wonder if uh, maybe if Wagon gets to the next game, he could do something like a cute little fake and then just take the nat again. But then if I do stuff like that as playing a Zerg, I just end up delaying my, my hatchery for a good minute and I lose, so... <laughs> Wagon, Wagon knows what he's doing. Yeah. See, I'm surprised Wagon's opting not to 12 pool against against Nycro here, considering this was only like a week after he played me. And this is such a hard map to wall, especially if you're not weird and opening with a double gate or something like that. Yeah, like, I'm actually, as you said, very surprised we haven't seen any build like that. Um, especially with, like, how iconic that is from Wagon. Like, I feel like he is someone I think of for just, like, always length flooding. And I'm very surprised we haven't seen him even attempt it, like... I feel like uh, when you're a Zerg player playing the series versus a Protoss player, you can often get quite a few free wins by just going for a Ling Flood. Oh, exactly. And you have no idea how Nycro is going to react to that early pressure. He might just fold. He might not even be used to seeing it. Um, and you, you don't really know until you waste the game on it. But at the same time, I feel like Wagon 12 pulls enough where he knows the transition out of it because he seemed pretty experienced when he did it against me. So Maybe he... Um... 
maybe he res respects Nicro, I guess, a bit more as a player, like in the sense where he thinks like Nicro might be above that threshold where he can make that stuff work, or at least right. But even if you do no damage, um, if you do no damage with the twelve pool, you're still only a little bit behind. It's not the end of the world. Yeah. But I don't know. So once again, we're seeing a twilight. Um, and Stalker coming out here for Nicro, so he's just gonna try to deny that Overlord. Yeah, Nicro only knows one build. Look at this, look at this Mist Rally though. Nicro bringing his Stalker up front instead of scouting in his main. Had Wagon just gone straight for the tech, I feel like that would have been a different story. He realizes now bringing it back home. He didn't change the rally from the Adept. Look at this timing though. <laughs> Catches the Overlord as soon as it goes <laughs> to the natural. Or into the main. He oh, the Zerlings get in though. That's that's great. He didn't wall off. Yeah, and he, he can. Uh, he scouts everything. He could probably get a probe or two if he uh, if he clicks on some. I I don't know. Why would you keep? Okay, he gives up. I would love to see him try to go for that probe. Yeah, and here he is now. Will he get one? Will he get one? Oh, he does. I I feel like those those lings actually did everything they were supposed to and more. He scouts what's coming next, and he also gets a little bit of a economic damage in. Yeah, I mean, and it's just like, I find it's almost worth it getting that economic damage just to like put your opponent slightly on tilt. It's like yeah, everyone Wagen... hates losing like just the one worker that they didn't need to. Exactly. It's it's not really going to throw off anything, but it's just going to get in your opponent's head. W Wagon's so in tune with this, this play style, though. You notice this is the third game in a row. He started his missile attack upgrade before even throwing down the roach warrant he's so confident this isn't a depth drop or this isn't a our archon drop that he's already investing into what's good against it like that's a pretty early evo yeah definitely and as you're saying like with how popular double stargate is like those missile attacks would be worthless if it, um micro was going for that it's such a massive risk but maybe wagon has played with micro before he knows that he doesn't really like that style All right, so all the roaches are popping out now, so they'll be here just in time to deal with these. Here we go, uh, the two adepts Archons. getting into the third. We're gonna get at least a few drones here. That's great, especially because Wagon stopped making them. Oh, and there's actually no units here at the natural. Necro can just kill this uh, spore color right away if he chooses and to. And it looks like Wagon actually doing a good job there, delaying this push, and, and it looks like Necro's just gonna leave. That's not the damage you want. He got a queen. Um, yeah. Um... But besides that, not too much done there from that Archon drop. This is looking a lot like game one. Hopefully, with those adjustments, it won't fall the same way. Yeah, I was really hoping Necro could get something more done there. I felt like he had the opportunity to, but... The Observer's here now, so he's gonna go after those active creep tumors. That should try to keep Zerg back. Um, he's gonna get an Overlord for his troubles, too. And then back in the base, you're seeing Charge, but this time, oh. that second Robo again. And Necro actually losing one of his Archons, so that's pretty big. Um, really don't need to lose those, like, ever, so... Yeah, exactly. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if... And that's exactly what Wagon's doing. He's pushing right across the map, because with this opener, you're so fragile. When you lose one of those Archons, you're effectively taking a, say, 25% army hit. Um, so Wagon's just going to turn around and say, you know what, you probably don't have the numbers needed to defend against my... Uh, 18 roach push here or 16 roach push um no reinforcements though so it's a little dangerous and especially without roach speed yeah that uh, is on the way but it won't be here anytime soon um so here's the reaction the warp in i would have loved to see him dive on those earlier because they do take a lot more damage when they're warping in um all of a sudden this looks a little bit more nitro favored yeah and really trading these roaches for some zealots oh not, i would not, not go really for the ideal. archon either um, yeah, he really just needs to try to pick off anything he can here, but it looks like this uh, Warp Prism Micro here from Nitro gonna deny yeah. anything. Great Micro from Nitro. Um, and he's probing hard. You see that actually in workers, they're pretty comparable. Nitro has a three worker lead, and that's not where you want to be as Zerg. You can tell Wagon, maybe this game giving a little too much respect to that all in, because we're seeing a double robo from Nitro. And with upgrades, so. It's pretty hard for Wagon to get a feel of what's going on. Yeah, Nicro's like leagues ahead of where he was at this point last game. And I think Wagon's actually like 
put himself behind a bit. Like, he didn't get that fourth base for so long. And being even on uh, bases of Protoss when you're Zerg is just not, not a good idea. Like, you really don't want to be there. These wings popping in, but scouted immediately. I don't know how he's going to get out here. Yeah. Great Archon positioning. He might get the Archon, though. That would be pretty great. Oh, just barely doesn't get it. 30 HP. 22 shields and 10 HP left on it. Oh, I love this though. Four chargelets in the main. He's gonna go after the queen first, and then realizing that his his gig is up, he's picking up each zealot one by one. He does get the queen. Yeah, and only loses one zealot first, so that's pretty good. Oh, uh, that's pretty awesome. Finally, some drones coming down here for wagon. He's definitely well behind economically. Uh, that fourth base is still maybe around 20 seconds done from completing. And we're already seeing Storm coming out. Um, before there's even a large amount of Hydras on the way, we're now at 13, 14 Hydras, and there's already five High Templar with Storm available. Yeah, and you can really tell this game, Micro hasn't been pressured to do anything. Like, you can just look at his army and see, like, there's so few amounts of Zealots or Stalkers or anything like that in the army. Because he's only needed to concentrate on getting his core tech units up. His yeah, exactly. Ones. There's no indication of any kind of early game struggle here from Nitro. I think this fight's going to tell a lot to Wagon. And mainly it's just going to tell him how far behind he is. He sees all of that tech. Um, and then Nitro committing pretty heavily here. Now, the Lurker Den is a different direction in this game, and I like it a lot. He's just got to live until that, that building starts to get useful. Yeah, we seen him get it last game, but he just wasn't able to use it as Nycro put on way too much pressure. And Decent Biles, huge great storms. storms. Oh my god. Um, Wasting on a, on a small chunk of, of units after, but I think the damage was done there. 11 roaches on the way. Wagon realizing, hey, wait a minute, you only got four morals. That's actually not too much for this point in the game. I'm just going to reinvest into roaches. Because Archons and High Templar aren't the best. If he keeps bleeding away units like this, though, it might become a little troublesome. Yeah, losing a couple High Templars there, so a uh, bit sloppy from that car. He also doesn't have a War Prism with this push, so these Oh, I would are love to see here. him dive in. There's a free Archon there, and if he keeps pushing, there's not really any High Templar left in that. This might be Wagon's chance, but there's no way of him knowing that that uh micro didn't reinvest into more temple he, actually he did and they're coming around here yeah they will have enough for storm soon uh very shortly but uh maybe wagon can hit a timing before that finishes like this actually ended up swinging back in wagon's favor you see here he's he's back on the upgrades um and he's getting his lurker tech which is going to be great against the reduced immortal numbers up to five now respectable but not really what you see from a double robo like Nycro has been on. Um, we're going to have to see how this engagement try uh, plays out here. Yeah, and Nycro actually, I think, doing a good job trying to engage before Wagon gets to his base. Um, yeah, so it's almost like he knows, but I don't know if he saw the Lurker dead. Yeah, not a whole lot of Lurkers out, though, so really not... Like, they're definitely, definitely there, but they're not going to be the biggest impact on this fight, I feel. Um, yeah, exactly. Pretty big storm goes down there. Uh, Lurkers are getting off some nice shots on the army. But Wagon really has to play this very carefully. His army is so brittle. And we have a Zealot run by actually at the third base here. Getting a, some damage done. We'll get cleaned up. And overall, Nyko really just doesn't have a huge amount of storms at his disposal there. Luckily, he does have a decent chunk of Immortals now. Yeah, the, the nine Immortals we're up to now, that's getting a little bit excessive, especially with no real transition in sight here. Yeah, I think he looked at um, Wagon's army and kind of realized, like, okay, there's a lot of Roaches in this. I need something to deal with those. Well, not to mention the Lurkers, too. Immortals are actually great against the Lurkers. Yeah, they are your... They're like your bulldozers getting rid of all the... Oh, I'm not sure about this decision either. He leaves just the Lurkers at his, his third base. Now, had Nyker seen that, that would have been actually a really easy pick. Um, yeah. Um, I love. I actually love this decision in the end, though, because it looks like Wagon might actually get the space. Yeah, and that's going to work out pretty well. It looks like he can target down this Nexus really quick if he wants to. The um, issue is Zerg doesn't really have recall, and Nycro saying, wait a minute, your whole army is at my base. I'm just going to poke in. He trades a little bit, but... Yeah. yeah, this is a brilliant decision from Wagon. Look at this. 
no fourth base, and he's pushing into the natural. I would love to just see the Zergs run in. Yeah, he did recall his units to the third, so they will come here and try to clean this off. Um, I think Wagon's fine losing these units, though, in a trade. Like, all these Roaches and Ravagers, yeah, they're pretty expensive, but if you can get something good out of it, like, those are all really good biles. Um, unfortunately, most of them connect into the mortals. But what else is he going to get in the main? He's going to get a full scout off of everything in the main, which is nice. Um, yeah, but just... I'm not sure if a scout is useful at this point in the game. There's not really nothing to, to see except that he has a Stargate, but no Fleet Beacon. That turned into from, that turned from a very good situation for Wagon to uh, not the best. Yeah, I think he, he was a bit indecisive there, I feel like, with what he w was going to get. Like, I feel like if he had targeted down a Nexus again, or like maybe like target down some tech structure in the main... Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. If, if there was no natural and say you're missing your, your Templar Archives or something like that, that would have been a huge win. But he kind of traded his whole army for one base. Yeah. Um, and now all of a sudden Nitro has nine High Templar with Storm. And also 11 Immortals. This is getting a little bit scary, especially still with no tech at all. The Infestation Pit just going down. Yeah, uh, these four immortals actually being a bit ambitious here, trying to poke out. Some of these doubts are going to go down. Uh, a couple storms come down as well. Oh, that that was almost a juicy uh, lurker hit there. All of the high tempo were lined up. Yeah. I love that the oracle just for the vision, um, because a lot of times zergs will try to get cute and just snipe your your observers. Yeah, um, and um, no, nothing to back up these lurkers. I don't know where the rest of this army is, but these lurkers are just getting completely destroyed. Yeah, all of the good Protosses the throw in that Stargate. GG, uh, just like that. And that's going to lead the series in the Necro's favor. 3-1. to one. And Necro's going to take it. So, so we see Necro moving on to the finals. Yeah, and um, we're actually going to cast Got Quill versus White Ninja tonight to see who's going to face him off. I think they are going to play at like 12 tonight, uh, Eastern. Wow, so a, a late night hours. cast. Yeah. That's Tell like, me out. I got, I got an 8 a.m. lecture tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, shit, dude. <laughs> well, I'll be up, so. I of got course. More passion. You, you have more passion. Yeah. Also, because yeah. I work late tomorrow, so I don't need to, you know, I kind of have to stay up. <laughs> <laughs> you on that nocturnal sleep schedule. Yeah, unfortunately. But, but yeah, thanks for coming in, uh, Casting with me, dude. That was pretty fun. Yeah, no, no problem. It's always a blast, and I love to see uh, our fellow teammates duke it out in the TAI, so. Yeah. Well, that's going to be it for us today. Um, have a good night, everyone. All right. Thanks for tuning in. See ya.